Not a good start to the video. In my last video, we benchmarked the Ryzen 3 3200G and Ryzen 5 3400G, and we determined that the Ryzen 3 3200G is actually rocking an insane improvement from last generation's APUs. So today, we're gonna benchmark it with three dedicated graphics cards. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the Ryzen 3 3200G with three dedicated graphics cards, specifically a low-end card, which is the lowest that I would possibly go and consider worth it, a balanced card, which just makes the most sense to me, and then we're gonna push it to its limit with an overkill graphics card. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking your PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly pay some bills. Today's video is brought to you by Square Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one spot, at least in my opinion, to create a website if you're looking to boost your online presence. Squarespace is perfect for people like me and chances are probably like you because I have absolutely zero real website building experience and Squarespace makes it super easy to do with their award-winning templates. If you're looking to create a website maybe for your PC flipping business or maybe consolidate all of your social media links for you streamers to one spot, then I highly recommend using them as your all-in-one website building platform. I actually transferred my third party domain to Squarespace, yet another awesome feature by the way that was super easy to do because I wanted to take advantage of their templates that transform really well to mobile, their excellent customer service, and honestly I just wanted to get a clean looking website up and running quickly. I'll show you guys my final website in an upcoming video, but if you want to take my word before that, then head on down to that first link in the description, squarespace.com ctt, to score yourself a 14 day free trial and 10% off your next subscription. Alright, so I'm sure you're wondering by now which three specific graphics cards I decided to go with, and for our low-end card, which I'll explain in just a minute, is the RX 570, our balance card is the GTX 1660 Ti, and finally our overkill card, which I really just wanted to use in another video, is the new RX 5700 XT. Looping back to the RX 570, I feel like it's important to note that this is probably the lowest-end card that I would personally recommend when upgrading from the 3200G integrated graphics to a dedicated GPU. I saw so many people over the last year want to upgrade from the 2200G to something Something like the RX 560 or GTX 1050 Ti, and in my opinion, that's just not worth the extra cost. In my opinion, I think you should sit on the APU for as long as you can to save up enough money for an actual worthy upgrade of a dedicated graphics card. The 3200G can certainly hold you over in most games in 1080p, and I just don't really recommend those tiny incremental improvements. This specific RX 570 is the ASRock 8GB model, and all of these GPUs will be running at stock speeds for this video. Moving on to our balance graphics card, I decided to throw in the GTX 1660 Ti because you'll see in the benchmarks that it balanced pretty nicely with the Ryzen 3 quad-core APU. In most cases, you typically want to spend around double or sometimes even triple amount of money on the GPU compared to the CPU, that's in pure gaming PCs mind you, and yeah, the GTX 1660 Ti just happened to work perfectly for that. This specific model is the EVGA triple slot and single fan black model. And finally for our bottlenecking card, I decided to throw in a brand new RX 5700 XT, specifically this 8GB power color blower style card because I wanted to push the 3200G to its absolute max and I really wouldn't recommend this combination. By pushing this APU to its absolute max, you're using every last bit of processing power that it has and in turn, you're gonna see some low 1% and 0.1% lows which you're about to see in the benchmarks. Speaking of the benchmarks for our testing today, I'm using our normal rig which is rocking an Asus Prime X470 Pro motherboard with the latest BIOS version to support this chip, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM, which is actually clocked at 3200 megahertz, which I didn't realize I could do in our previous video. And finally, all of the games are installed on a 500 gigabyte A data SSD. For today's testing, I decided to keep the 3200G at stock speeds once again, just so you can see exactly what kind of performance you should expect right out of the box. And instead of choosing game settings for each individual graphics card, I decided to keep the game settings at the exact same. That way you can easily see the difference going from GPU to GPU. The first game up was Fortnite just like usual and in 1080p and high settings you can see that the RX 570 got some pretty impressive results on its own and then the 1660 Ti got up to 124 but after that you can see that there was definitely a bottleneck with the 5700 XT. It barely improved on the average FPS alone but then the lows were just nasty.
60 because it was pushing the 3200G for everything it had. Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, also in 1080p and high settings, and here the GPUs actually scaled up quite nicely from 83 to 96 to 116, and I really had no problem with the 3200G and any of these graphics cards. After that, I fired up the Rainbow Six built-in benchmarking tool, which had similarly pleasing results. In 1080p and ultra settings, all three of these GPUs scaled up quite nicely, and the lows remain pretty high and consistent. Following that, I tested Counter-Strike Global Offensive during an online match on the Dust2 map, and here you can see that there was a good jump from the RX 570 to the 1660 Ti, but then that gap narrowed as we neared our bottleneck with the RX 5700 XT. Getting into the way tougher to run games, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and its brutal built-in benchmarking tool was up next, and in 1080p and high settings, the 570 and 1660 Ti actually looked quite nice, but the 5700 XT results just got some crazy stuttering. Once again, when you push the CPU to its absolute limit with an over-the-top GPU, you're just not going to get good results, and this is why it's important to balance your system. And finally, the last game I tested was Far Cry New Dawn with its built-in benchmarking tool, and in 1080p and high settings, we got pretty much the exact same type of results with the 5700 XT being bottlenecked by the 3200G. Overall, though, I'm pretty happy with the performance of both the RX 570 and GTX 1660 Ti here for sure. I also decided to throw in 3D Mark Times by Benchmark just so you can see the proper scaling of GPU to GPU, and here are the results for that, but just remember this won't really reveal if we actually do indeed have a bottleneck, only that these graphics cards are obviously very different in performance on their own. So there you have it. As you can see, the low-end RX 570 and balanced end GTX 1660 Ti are actually performing very nicely with the Ryzen 3 3200G, and I just think that this APU is such a good idea for you budget gamers that can't afford all of your parts at once, because then this allows you to eventually upgrade to a dedicated graphics card once you have the money. Overall, I think my official recommendation for those of you considering the 3200G by itself before upgrading to a dedicated GPU is to only make that upgrade when you're ready to spend at least the amount of money for something like the RX 570, but then just know that you can always scale that up higher to something like a GTX 1660 Ti, or possibly even a bit higher than that with the RTX 2060 as well. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my Ryzen 3 3200G benchmarking video with some dedicated graphics cards. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of these benchmarking results or what graphics card you're planning on upgrading with your APU. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, we got another build guide coming. You don't want to miss that video.